Thank you. Let's be seated. Program Directors, Ambassador Dengo, and Minister Thamini Zuma, the Duarte, <coughs> Dengo, and Whitley families, President Khalema Motlante, and Megugu Matlante, former Premier of Gauteng, Mr. Tokyo Sekhwale, the Premier of Gauteng, Dr. David Makura, ministers and deputy ministers, the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, Baba Uamos Masondo, the leadership of the African National Congress, as led here by the National Chairperson and the TG, and members of the National Executive Committee, the leadership of the Alliance, is represented by the leaders of the ICCP and COSATU and leaders of the democratic movement, religious leaders who are here present and business leaders and comrades and friends who are here. We are gathered here in sorrow and in disbelief. Although our beloved comrade Jesse has been gravely ill for several months, as many of us know, it is difficult to comprehend that someone with such vitality and energy and spirit has departed from this earth and has been taken away from us. We all feel like she has been taken away from us before we all had an opportunity to say goodbye to her. As officials of the African National Congress, we had arranged to see her today at 2 p.m. And we had seen her a few months ago. And when we saw her then, we were encouraged by the progress that we thought she was making in dealing very bravely with her illness. This passing of Comrade Jesse today is a really sad moment for all of us. Earlier, uh, the family, I did shed a tear because I remembered the conversations that she and I used to have, particularly about the place where we were born. I was born in Western Native Township, just a street across from where she was born in Nuclear. And we used to reminisce about playing in all those areas. We were separated by a main road. The one area was meant for Africans and the other area was meant for coloreds. But we were glad that as we grew up, matured politically, joined the Black Consciousness Movement, and then finally the Congress Movement. We were united in our determination to work together to bring an end to the horror of apartheid. I think we should use this moment not so much to mourn Comrade Jesse Duarte, but to celebrate her hugely impactful life as we have heard. Comrade Jesse was a faithful, dedicated, and fiercely loyal leader of the African National Congress. It is difficult to imagine the ANC without our beloved Deputy Secretary General. 
and to think that we will never again hear her voice and her humorous laughter carrying down the corridors of Lutuli House. For close on to 10 years, she served as the ANC's Deputy Secretary General. For 25 years, she served on the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress. And from the years of her youth to her final days, she served the people of South Africa with distinction, with dedication, with humility, and with passion. And that is why it was a fairly straightforward and easy decision for me as President of the Republic to declare that she should have an official funeral today. And I'm rather pleased, Premier Makura, that the Gauteng government was able to organize this funeral within hours so that we can give her the dignified and decent send-off that we are giving her today. And I also want to thank the family for being cooperative and working with our staff in the presidency as well as at the premier's level to enable this send-off to be as dignified as it is. Comrade Jesse worked alongside great leaders of our struggle. She learned the politics of liberation from leaders such as Umama or Albertina Sisulu, and leaders such as Umbei, Beyes Nodier, as well as Madiba. From them, she imbibed the qualities of revolutionary leadership, qualities that she was to demonstrate in every position that she occupied. Somehow, despite <clears throat> the great qualities that she has learned from various revolutionary leaders, she found a way to mix those qualities with her own dynamism her own inherent, vibrant, and dynamic nature enabled her to bring about a wonderful mix of the qualities she was taught and her natural talent as a leader. As we worked with her, some of us got to realize the truism in the saying that dynamite comes in small packages. Comrade Jesse was the typical and the quintessential dynamite. She was small, she was short, but she was also well packaged as a small revolutionary dynamite. She had qualities that she was able to pass on to others, as we have heard, to students and many other people that she worked with. Throughout her life, Comrade Jesse was a dynamic organizer. She was an organizer of women, and she was also a great feminist. As the Secretary of the Federation of Transvaal Women, FETRO, she was part of building and leading a powerful women's movement that directly challenged the oppression of black women and shook the foundations of the apartheid state. She mobilized women across the country to resist the restrictions imposed upon them by a racist and sexist political system and a patriarchal society. Like the generations that had come before, like the defiant women who burnt their passes in 1913, like the defiant 20,000 women who marched on the Union buildings in 1956, Comrade Jesse was determined that women should occupy their rightful place in the struggle for national liberation. I often derive a great deal of joy when we have visiting heads of state, when we take them to the Union buildings and I show them what Imbogoto really means, there is the representation 
of the stone that looks like a calabash with another stone on top of it that celebrates and represents the women's march of 20,000 women in 1956. And we have inscribed the slogans and the constitutional principles that underpinned the march of the women in 1956. So in remembering Comrade Jesse, that representation of the Imbogoto at the Union buildings came to mind. We remember her immense contribution to the hearings of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission on the experience of women who were detained in apartheid jails. We remember the courage with which she spoke against the abuse of women, not just by the apartheid security forces, but within the ranks of our liberation movement and also the abuse of women generally in the country. Even in the democratic era, Comrade Jesse was relentless in advancing the position of women in all areas of public and private life. She confronted the patriarchal attitudes and practices that sought to diminish the role and contribution of women in parliament, in government, and across society as a whole. She did not hesitate to confront inadequate representation of women in the structures of the African National Congress itself. Comrade Jesse was also an organizer of workers, as we have heard. Her involvement in the mobilization of domestic workers was part of a lifelong commitment to the struggles of the working class. When the great miners' strike of 1987 took place, she was one amongst many in our community who organized themselves as part of the strike committee that was there to assist the 340,000 mine workers who went on strike for 21 days. As we heard, Comrade Jesse was also an organizer of writers. Her role in the formation of the Congress of South African Writers and her work for Raven Press revealed not only her love for literature, but also her conviction that writing, art, and culture serve as a powerful instrument of empowerment and liberation. Comrade Jesse said last year she was looking forward to writing books during her retirement. It is our ardent wish that the family should find time to publish some of the work that she has produced so that future generations may draw inspiration from the record of a fine activist. Comrade Jesse was an outstanding and gifted organizer of activists. Working closely with Madiba, alongside Comrade Frini Junwala and Comrade Barbara Masikila in Comrade Mandela's office, she firmly believed that people are their own liberators, as Madiba believed. She was never content to remain closeted in an office, to sit on a stage or to direct the struggle from the comfort of a boardroom. Mamal Bettina Sisulu taught her that a good leader should always be among the people, in the community, in the front line, in homes, in the pathways of our rural areas, and in the streets of our towns and townships. Wherever there was suffering, where families were mourning, where students were organizing, you would find Comrade Jesse. You'd find her there offering comfort, offering hope and encouragement. Comrades have remarked that whenever Comrade Jesse entered a room where people were mourning, she was able to immediately comfort those in pain with her kind and encouraging words. She was gracious, 
compassionate and always kind. She was always there teaching, organizing, and mobilizing. Comrade Jesse never missed a beat. She was on top of every issue. She did lead with distinction, and she always made her voice heard. To whomever she had to speak, whether it was Madiba, whether it was Walter Sisulu, even as she disagreed with positions that had been taken, she would always be speaking out. It was a matter of great distress to her that she felt that the movement to which she had dedicated her life had grown distant from the people they were given the responsibility to serve. She was continuously pained by what she perceived as a move away from the non-racialism principle that had been the foundation on which the African National Congress was built. She felt that we were not laying enough emphasis on promoting and advancing non-racialism in our country. This is a deficiency that we are now called upon to remedy. Drawing on her example, we should as leaders and activists humble ourselves before our people and correct some of those issues that Comrade Jesse was pained by. We are called upon to restore the values of our constitution and our movement. We must take up the concerns and champion the interests of the people of this country, particularly the workers, the poor, and the vulnerable. Above all, we need to work together with the people to improve their lives and to transform our society. As we heard Comrade Makura say, one of the key issues that troubled Comrade Jesse was the socio-economic position and suffering of many of our people. The inequality and the poverty that continues in our country troubled her. Comrades and friends, the Holy Quran says, stand firmly for justice, even if it is against yourselves, against your parents, against your kin, against rich or poor. Jesse Duarte's sense of justice was keen. Her sympathies for the poor, the vulnerable, the destitute, and the marginalized ran deep. She had empathy and was able to walk in other people's shoes and see through their, their eyes. It is this that enabled her to see the suffering of our people and empathize with them. She took up their cause and stood firm on her own principles, even when her stance attracted criticism or even personal attack. She was a champion of the oppressed everywhere. She will forever be remembered for the commitment to the cause of people, the people of Palestine, the people of Western Sahara, and indeed championing the cause of ending the boycott or the embargo against the Cuban people. And she will forever be rem remembered for keeping these issues alive in South Africa and in the minds of our people. Comrade Jesse indeed had great courage. She was at the forefront of the fight against the apartheid state at the height of its most cruel and oppressive stage. Who can forget the power of her intervention during the inquest into the death of Ahmed Timur five years ago when she exposed the lies of the security branch telling the world what she and her family had witnessed and endured in their cruel hands. 
She also had the courage to speak out honestly and directly about the abuses and destructive tendencies she saw within her movement and within democratic governance. At a time like this, our nation needs more people of her courage and consciousness. Our nation calls out for people who are not afraid to confront wrongdoing and to speak hard truths. Our nation calls out for people who will, even in the face of severe resistance, champion the values of honesty, integrity, selflessness, and service to the people of our country. But another wonderful attribute that we will remember Comrade Jesse for is that she was a unifier. She spent many hours and kilometers traveling around the country at great cost to her own health on uniting the movement. She was a great leader and also very good at the administrative leadership of the Secretary General's office. She wanted a united ANC and she worked very hard to unite the branches of the ANC in all its structures, but she was also actively involved where she saw weaknesses in Congress movement entities such as COSATU as well as the party. She embodied a politics that was never neither divisive, mean, nor small. Her politics were empowering and unifying. She understood the immense power of a united people and a united movement as well. There was no difficulty, and indeed there was no challenge that could not be overcome by a people united in purpose and action in Comrade Jesse's views. And so she fought against factionalism and disunity, she stood firm against those who would sow division, who, interested, who were only interested in personal advancement, who pursued narrow interests, and who also neglected the needs of our people. I think we should, in her memory, and in following her example, strive even harder for unity, let us build a united nation and a united movement founded on the principles of our Constitution. And I think all of us will agree that Comrade Jesse, lying here, has run her race. Our nation's thoughts and prayers are with Comrade Jesse's family at this very difficult time. The nation does share in your grief the Dango family, the Whitley family, we share in your grief and the Duarte family. May you be comforted by the knowledge that the life of this great patriot has inspired many that she worked with and her contribution will never be forgotten. May we all strive to honor her, to honor her life by doing everything within our means sparing neither strength nor courage to achieve the free and united and equal society for which she so gallantly fought. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Comrade Jesse, we say to you, Thank you.